Thank you, Rita, for that beautiful prelude welcoming us to worship on this Lord's Day. We call it the second Sunday of the Advent season, so glad you could join us for worship. We also welcome those uh, joining us online today and dialing in. We'll begin by singing the opening hymn, Prepare the Royal Highway. Special welcome to our guests and visitors. Glad you could join us. Hope you feel welcome as you participate in our worship today. Also, those dialing in, glad you could uh, join us. As part of our Advent worship, of course, we have a special litany, and today Lauren will read that as we light the uh, two candles on the Advent wreath. And then we'll be singing two verses from O Come, Emmanuel. every beginning, there is a yearning for the one who is coming. O Emmanuel, prepare us for your God. coming. We gather to get ready for what? Only heaven knows. O Emmanuel, prepare us for your coming. We wait for the day when God will create a prevailing peace on earth and natural born enemies turn into newborn friends. O Emmanuel, prepare us for your coming. We get ready for God to come close by, laying our lives open to Jesus, asking him to sort through all our mixed motives. O Emmanuel, 
Prepare us for your coming. Jesus, we welcome your presence now with the lighting of these candles, whose flames bring warmth to winter and fill this place with the glow of hope. Amen. Join me in the prayer of the day. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, kids. Good morning. Glad you could make it this morning through the snow and the wind. It's old man winter has returned. Should we say hello to him, Art? Yeah. Yeah, good. Hello, yeah, don't stay too long, though. No, no, we're going to be done by February 5th. February? Okay. We got a prophet in the midst here. <laughs> All right, can you kids, can you kids say thank you? Thank you. All right, can you say Mucho gracias. Mucho gracias. And the Norwegians really pour it on. They say tusen and tuck. Tus That's a thousand thanks. And of course, the Germans, through Wayne Newton, sing it. Dankeschön, my darling, Dankeschön. Yeah, there's many ways to say it, but are there many more words more beautiful than those two to say thank you? I got a call last week. Somebody just called and said, I want to thank you for who you are and what you're doing. I mean, we don't need that to survive, but it felt like my feet were lifted two or three feet off the ground. And you know what I'm talking about, to hear that word, thank you. Today we're going to hear, as Art reads the lesson, St. Paul writing to a church in, it's called Philippi, ancient city in the Middle Eastern Empire. And he says, I thank my God every time I think of you with thanksgiving and prayer. Can you imagine how that bolstered the people at Philippi to hear the one that started their church saying, I thank God for you with thanksgiving for who you are. It goes a long way to say thank you. And it comes back to us in many ways too when we hear it back from others. It's a gift God has given us. In fact, God says to us in his own way, 
thank you for being who you are and living out the life I've created in you and have called you to be, especially as you follow my son Jesus, the greatest gift I've given you. And so here's a little ditty I wrote some years ago for my brothers and sisters, the church, and that would be you too. It goes like this, and you could sing it with me the second time around. Thanks to you, my life's a lot brighter. Thanks to you, a sweeter song. Thanks to you, my burdens are lighter, because you make me feel I belong. Thanks to you, my life's a lot brighter. Thanks to you, a sweeter song. Thanks to you, my burdens are lighter, because you make me feel I belong. Lord, thank you for calling us to belong to you and calling us to be a part of this community called the church. Help us daily to say thanks to you, to others, to remind them how special they are to us and to you. We pray in Jesus' name. And all God's kids said, amen. amen. Arthur, you're going to read the lessons today. How does it feel to turn 60? I feel like 45. <laughs> And best part is, no gray hair yet. <laughs> first lesson, first reading is Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the descendants of Levi, refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old, as in former years. The second reading is Luke 1, chapter 1, 68 through 79. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. To show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way. To give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. Through the tender mercy of the In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those The second reading is Philippines one, chapter 1, 3 through 11. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart. For all of you sharing God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness 
How I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having pro produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Let us rise to the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The Gospel is Luke chapter 3, 1 through 6. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was the ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Ithaca and Trichetes, and Lysus, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Ananias and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as written in the book in the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Praise you, Lord Christ. Thank you, Arthur. Let us pray. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. May your word today inspire us, teach us, and ground us in the being that you give us through Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain brought low. The crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. I brought my pet rock here today. It is really smooth. But it didn't start out that way. It was probably pretty jagged, uh, pretty broken. But over the years, maybe, I don't know, hundreds of years, in the ocean water or the lake water and the wind, it just kept beating and blowing. And like a rock tumbler, which you could do in days, this might have taken several years to smooth this rock. That rough rock made smooth by nature's forces. Just like God, who brings smoothness out of rough places in our lives. And throughout history, we see God's people in rough places brought to that smooth landing. Like Moses and the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years, finally brought to the promised land. Or how about Noah, adrift at sea for 40 days in the storm, and God finally brought Noah and his family to a safe landing. Or Daniel, in the lion's den, escaped by God's gracious hand, and also from the fiery furnace. Or how about God's son, Jesus, tortured, spit upon, nailed on the cross, where he hung to die, thinking it was the end, but on the third day, God raised Christ from this roughest of places for you and me and for the salvation of the world. Those rough places shall be made smooth is the promise of our Lord. And we need to hear that today because we are in a rough place. And I'm not just talking about the medical issues and concerns with the pandemic we've been in for the last couple of years, which is enough of a rough place. But I'm talking about other things that have brought us to a rough place, like the dishonoring of God, 
dishonoring his commandments, the Ten Commandments, other ordinances, dishonoring the gift of his son who came to be the light of the world, and yet we choose to live in the darkness. The rough places of violence which permeate our culture. Like a man-man driving through a Christmas parade and killing many and wounding many more. And some say it was an accident, and yet we know it was an evil spirit that was driving that car, inhabiting a man. Or another young person with a gun going into his school and killing classmates and injuring others. Does it get any more diabolical than that? Supposed to be our safe places, our schools, our churches. Or how about Hollywood and these gaming industries continuing to pour out and make games and movies which celebrate violence? Don't they get the message that we know life imitates art and art imitates life? I'm not talking about you, Art. That's a different art. <laughs> or again, the most diabolical thing that could happen. Boys and girls abducted, kidnapped, and then sold into this thing called sex slavery. Billions of dollars made on our children who are doped and used as sex things. You just wonder how long the Lord could look down and be patient with us. We have to wonder. In Second Chronicles, we hear the writer speaking on behalf of the Lord, who says, if my people who I call by name will humble themselves and seek my face and pray. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. My people called by my name. That sounds like you and me. To humble ourselves, to pray, to seek God's face, and then we'll see a healing. Maybe a wave like the ocean coming over this country and over the world to bring healing and wholeness. And like John the, the baptizer fulfilling the prophet Isaiah, written hundreds of years before, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, repent, which is another way of saying turn to the Lord, turn away from other gods, Turn away from your sin, turn away from violence, and you will live, not just for a day, but for eternity. And all these issues that permeate our culture, which are bringing us down a slippery slope, we can't find ways to agree, to disagree, or reason or dialogue together. We're at a place now, if you don't think like me, if you don't believe like me, if you don't vote like me, I'm a demon. And you're the demon if you don't think the same. We've lost the art of civil dialogue, which is really a tragedy in our culture. And how do we get back to that? One person at a time, one moment at a time, one coffee cup at a time, sitting down with someone who might think differently than you and find ways to listen and work together for the common good. Or like our brother Warren Patrick sang last Wednesday at a beautiful concert here, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with who? With me. Doesn't matter if we're Catholic or Jew, Muslim or Hindu, Democrat, Republican, independent, libertarian, it begins with me. I could point a finger, but guess who's pointing back three times at me? So, Lord, we, we hear that word today, that you would call us to humble ourselves and to pray, to repent, seek your face, that we might be healed, and that we might find healing for this country 
and for the world, for the sake of all your children and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's join together in singing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Let us join together in confessing our belief and faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together now in prayer for God's people, for the church, for our nation, for all the nations of the world, for God's blessing. Close to home, we want to remember the family and friends of Artis Hovlin, a former member here who had moved to Colfax who died last week. Artis's funeral will be next Saturday, 10 a.m. at the Sampson Funeral Home in Colfax. Visitation, Friday night, 4.30 to 7.00. Let us pray. Lord, as you called John the baptizer to proclaim a repentance and calling people to turn to you for life and forgiveness, we turn to you today and admit we have fallen short. We've not loved you and our neighbors as ourselves and pray that forgiveness extends not only to us but to others who we extend the hand of friendship of grace and mercy. And like the prophet Micah, 
you call us to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you before others. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, bless this nation and all the nations of the world with justice and peace, especially today where there's war and strife, where there's hunger and famine, where there's schism and conflict and discord. We pray for all people affected by violence and oppression and persecution. Hear the cries of the people of Oxford High School in Michigan, in Waukesha, and throughout the world where there's been innocent suffering, that you might bring comfort and hope and use us to be instruments of your healing and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all the peacemakers today who stand in harm's way for the sake of justice and peace. We're especially mindful of our military personnel, police officers, Peace Corps workers and missionaries, our health care workers, first responders, all of us in our daily comings and goings. Lord, in your mercy. Bless this congregation, our partnership with Dover Lutheran, and your church here and throughout the world this Advent season, that we might indeed let our light shine so others might see and believe in Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, be with those we know to be ill and hospitalized, those facing and recovering from surgeries or undergoing treatments, those who are ill at home. We continue to pray for Emily Gunderson, for Carol Anderson, for B. Wheeler. Be with Vicki Anderson and Jim Gordon. Be with Ron Roth. Be with Wendy Newman's mother, Eva, recovering from surgery, and Eva's cousin, Bruce, and Ellen also hospitalized in need of healing. And others we name before you for healing and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. Comforter of all people, especially those grieving the loss of loved ones, today we pray for the family and friends of Artis Hovlin, that they might cling to the hope of the resurrection to everlasting life, and one day be reunited with those that have gone before us. And we pause to remember other family and friends dear to us who we name before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. As we prepare for the gift of the Holy Communion today, your body and blood freely broken and poured out for us in the world, we thank you that you love us just the way we are and prepare a place for us to be with you for eternity. We are truly thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we're going to join in the Holy Communion. You'll be ushered up front to uh, stand or kneel at the altar, or if you prefer to have the communion in a kit at your pew, or have the stewards bring it to you in your pew, uh, please let the ushers know. And the communion stewards, please come forward at this time. We remember the night Jesus had his last supper with his disciples before the night of his crucifixion, the Passover meal, when he took the bread and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body, it's given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And then after the supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. And when you pray, our Lord said, pray our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There are gluten-free wafers in the uh, bread tray, and then there's uh, grape juice in the center of the wine tray. All are welcome for the Holy Communion.
Let us pray. We thank you, almighty God, for this healing gift of life, the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to heal us and forgive us, to strengthen us and keep us in your grace now and forever. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine on us and be gracious to us. Lord, look upon us and the world you made with your favor and grant us your peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks to Rita for playing today and for uh, Daryl getting us on the live stream and the, and the dial-in service. Thanks to our ushers and communion stewards. Thanks to all of you for joining us today. Uh, during Advent, we do have midweek Advent services, 630. Uh, family worship, uh, all are invited. It's also live stream, so you could spread the word about that. I got to get my glasses so I could see what's going on. Yes, next Wednesday, the Tabitha Christmas party at the cantina, so spread the news about that. Um, next Saturday, December 11th, our colleague and uh, mayor and pastor Jeff Martin and his wife Linda are being honored at the Faith Baptist Church for 30 years of ministry here in Chatek, so you could spread the word about that also. Thanks to Mary Knudsen and crew for uh, getting the church decorated for the Christmas season. Uh, beautiful, and for Howie Moe and Mark Lindbaum for getting the manger scene out front to remind people driving by of this marvelous gift God has given to us in the world. What's all the commotion back there? What's all the commotion? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. We're here. Venus came Oh. Maestro. doesn't walk, but you do the walking by the cookies, yeah? <laughs> so next Saturday at 8 o'clock, you come to the fellowship hall downstairs, and then they give you a nice container and gloves and mask 
to pick out the cookies and goodies for your family and friends, yeah? Fill two or three if you want. Next, you take it to the ladies and they weigh it. And you pay them. That's all there's to it. Yeah, sure. Isn't that an easy way to make your Christmas cookies this year? You know, damn Lutheran ladies, they are the best bakers in town. Yeah, sure. Come shop. Oh, yeah, don't forget, there will be some cute crafts to buy, too. See you next Saturday, the 11th, at 8 o'clock. You know, they don't last very long, so you better get there early. That, uh, oh, <laughs> heavenly food, left, uh, I'm going to bring that home for lunch. Yeah, that was quite an accent there, Lena. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you got the message, next Saturday, 8 o'clock, it'll be gone by 9, so if you want some Christmas cookies, uh, you might want to get here early. Okay, our closing hymn is Arise. I suppose we should stand with that word. Huh? Arise, your light has come. in the light and the love of our Lord. Thanks for helping. 